Hello, everybody. Welcome to TikTok University. My name is Professor Dobbins, and I will be giving you your MBA in TikTokology today. Now, why am I qualified to teach you? Great question. As you can see on the screen, I scaled this brand new store from zero to hundred thousand dollars in two months, only using TikTok ads, and I also manage over thirty e-commerce brands at my done-for-you Shopify automation agency called Blue Ocean Digital. Now we spend over $100,000 a month on TikTok ads, and we also help you scale to one grand a day or more by helping you find winning products, build your store, create your ads, and manage them on TikTok ads. So if you're interested in learning more about that after class, there's a link in the description to book a call, but let's get into the knowledge. Now, before this video starts, I finally launched my first Discord No Limit e-commerce with my boy Everest, who is the best TikTok ad media buyer in the game. And together, we're gonna provide you with the latest TikTok ad strategies, pixel hacks, and glitches to scale your brands. And as you see in the chat down below, we do website reviews, ad account reviews, exclusive product drops, and so much more value and strategies for the cost of testing one product. So click the link in the description and get in this Discord before the link expires. So shameless plug out of the way, what is a TikTok ad? Anybody? Bueller? 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 Alrighty. A TikTok ad is completely different from any ad you've ever seen in your life. It is not a Facebook ad. It is not some slimy car salesman. I'm just going to berate you until you buy or die. A TikTok ad is disguised as a TikTok. It's supposed to be something that's fun. It's eye catching and it doesn't really feel like an ad. Now, how do you actually accomplish that? Well, you use UGC, customers raving about your product. Customers will always be your best salesman because people naturally gravitate towards other humans. So when they see an unbiased source, or at least somebody that they believe is unbiased, raving about your product, raving about your company, then they are much more inclined to check it out and see if your product's really worth it. Now with your TikTok ad, it should be very fast paced, meaning there's multiple clips, there's lots of cuts going on, you have multiple benefits on screen, and it's not too professional like a Harmon Brothers styled ad. Those just don't really convert. And something as simple as people filming on their phone selfie style or just having their phone filming, even though the quality is lower, it just feels more personal. It feels like a TikTok. And when you see something professional, naturally, as someone that's on TikTok, you're like, mm, that sort of is a red flag. That stands out to me. That has to be an ad. I know it sounds counterintuitive to have your ad not feel like an ad, but that doesn't mean having no call to actions or no offers. You should definitely have someone narrating, whether it's the text to speech or yourself saying, hey, our sale is ending soon, or we're going to run out of inventory soon. And even TikTok itself tells you to have a call to action at the end for getting people to click onto your website. So that doesn't mean get rid of the fundamentals because you're trying to disguise your ad at all. You still need to follow a framework. Now, depending on how long your ad is, you should have three to five main benefits that list out what's in it for your customer, because subconsciously that's going to be what they're thinking of. How does this product benefit my life? How does it change it? Does it make me happier? Does it improve my beauty, my confidence? Does it save me money? You have to be listing the main main core things that people will really care about because if you talk about other little minute details they're not going to click your ad and check out the rest of your product so when you're writing benefits it's really just a promise that you're making to your customer that your product can keep. So if you're selling a galaxy projector for your room, what's one of the main benefits people care about? Well, their rooms are boring. They hate staring at the walls. They want to have something that's exciting and really transform, give new life to the room. And that's literally a benefit that you can mention in the ad. Give new life to your room, transform your room in seconds. Now, when it comes to the length of your TikTok ad, I recommend 15 to 34 seconds. It's not too short and it's not too long that it's boring for people and they're just going to skip by it. That's really the golden range for you to tell your story and get your message across as to why someone should check out your product because you can easily fit in three to five main benefits to your product and also that call to action at the end and make sure you do have a call to action whether it's just an end screen with your offer with your logo with your website url i recommend having all those things in your call to action i usually will have the main benefit of my product followed by the URL that they can visit and then having some urgency saying that the sale is going to end soon. It's for a limited time only, or I have a limited amount of this product in stock. Now, in a lot of the best TikTok ads I've seen, they're usually a bit of a collage of different customer clips. So usually the opening clip might have one person speaking. Then the next clip is another person speaking about your product and how great it is. It usually has multiple backgrounds, all these different clips, and that just seems to catch people's attention the most and get them to click onto your website. Now, when it comes to TikTok, it's unlike any other B out there. It eats creatives for breakfast and usually you have to refresh your creatives every 14 days. That is a great guideline if you have a winning product, a winning offer right now for your current business. Now, if you're wondering how to make new creatives, you could literally grab your winning creative, change the music, change the opening hook clip, or you could have the same exact ad and then on the text on that opening clip, you could change it from one benefit 
to another benefit. There's so many ways that you could tweak your ad in literally seconds, and it's an all new ad for TikTok with brand new metadata, and that's gonna convert very, very well. So when you do have a winning creative, definitely look at the elements. Why was it successful? And try to recreate it. So have different models saying very similar lines. It could be slightly different, but again, having new faces, having new backgrounds really brings new life to ad creatives, even if it's the exact same messaging. Now let's get into some no-nos with your TikTok ads. You should have no exact exaggerated claims going on like if you download and buy vfriends you'll lose 30 pounds in one second now you should also have no fucking cursing which i absolutely hate i think cursing is amazing it's totally about bringing in and being native to your audience you have to be authentic but I guess TikTok really doesn't like it. Now, TikTok also hates watermarks. You should not be downloading your ad from TikTok and having any watermarks. Just use SnapTik. Stop being an absolute noob. You gotta have patience also though. I'm sorry about that. I'm still working on the Gary V, but you should also have no blurred out parts in your ad. So if you're selling, let's say a push-up bra and the girls are looking good, you can't just blur that out and hope TikTok actually accepts your ad. You need to probably film new clips. So you don't want to blur out anything. You want to make sure also that your ad is formatted in TikTok style, which is nine by 16. It's just a normal phone. Cause when you have empty space, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look native. And the whole point of your ad is to look native. Other things you should keep in mind is that when you're setting up your ad, you need to make sure that your business name, the account name that's running the ad is the exact same business name on your website. And the final thing is I would recommend having text on screen during your ad. I know some people think, oh, Oh, it doesn't look good, but you got to keep in mind with most TikToks out there, they do have some text on screen and they also have captions. So if you can add captions onto your ad, that is definitely going to convert better than having none. Now you should also be showing your logo and product in the first clip of your ad. I mean, at the very least, you can have a watermark in the top left or top right corner of your logo. Let's say if your opening clip is setting up the hook. So I know in a lot of clips, people will literally be talking to the camera and being like, Hey, do you want to get expensive perfumes for a fraction of the cost? So again, you're not really showing the product. You're not introducing it yet, but you're sort of setting it up so have the logo because every second you waste with your tiktok ads on filler stuff is affecting your conversion rate because people are so add there's so much stimulus on tiktok they will scroll by it if there's even half a second of boringness now when it comes to music i always recommend using songs that are going viral on tiktok and you can do that by downloading your ad going onto an account that is personal and then just choosing the best songs that are going viral right now and you might be wondering about copyright well with tiktok because they have licensing rights to a lot of these songs they don't actually flag those ads for using copyright songs, which I know sounds backwards. If you really don't want to play around too much and you want to use songs that you know are copyright free, you can go into the TikTok video editor right here and they do recommend songs that are copyright free. So you can go here with tracks with the highest spend. And also if you have a business TikTok account, you can put your ad in there and you can choose from all the different songs they recommend. So like some of the most popular ones are Lazy Sunday. We got Barely Breathing. These are all very popular. Feel the Groove. I know you've heard a million times. These are the ones that you can do if you want to stay on the safe side. Now, if you're dropshipping and you're wondering where's the best place to find clips, I highly recommend going to suppliers on Alibaba, on AliExpress, and you're going to find tons of different videos that you can use for your ads. Like this one right here, pretty sick, a lot of good transitions. You can also use Amazon. Amazon's got a ton of videos, usually on every product page, like this one right here, it's got a video. I mean, geez Louise, we got some good transitions. These are clips I've never seen before. You can also look up your product on TikTok and oh baby, this is typically the best place where we find our craves initially, at least a few good clips, TikTok, because it's already native. So we can see that person putting in the bubbles, they got their gun, it's shooting the bubbles, it's looking nice. And then you can also go to YouTube, find clips of your product. You can go to AdSpy, another tool. I would highly recommend always looking up the keywords of your product on different product research tools and you'll find clips. Okay, like this one. So, oof, super high quality. I think we can definitely use those when we're testing our ads. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you, son. Stealing other people's creatives ain't a-okay. So when you are scaling or if you do have an e-commerce brand, go use something like Fiverr, Billow, or find TikTok influencers to film custom content. You can literally look up film UGC or film TikTok ad, whatever it is. Look up all these different keywords and find the right influencer for you. If you're looking for females, we got females here. If you're looking for males, might have to scroll down a little bit, but you can also specify your price point. Fiverr is typically the cheapest. You can find people 40, 50 bucks that you can send your product to directly and they'll film some good stuff. Then you can also use Billow. I believe that's around 60 to 75, depending on what you're looking for. And they match you with other creators, but it also can be pretty cheap and profitable to definitely contact different TikTok influencers like this one right here. She has 300,000 followers. I reached out and I was able to get an ad for her and get her to post it on her feed for $80 for this brand right here, which is absolutely insane. So if you do reach out to a lot of TikTok influencers that have recently blown up, 
they don't know what they should be charging. They don't know their value yet. So in a lot of cases, you can get some steals and get a ton of traffic for very little cost. If you got a little more of a budget, the TikTok Creator Marketplace can be another place where you source these TikTok influencers. If you really hate doing research on TikTok itself, I mean, you can just look up hashtag influencer anyways. But okay, so we go down here, you can do United States of America, you can do followers, so you can specify like what is their follower count and also the gender that's typically the following them. So again, right here, if we scroll to the right, we got engagement rate, I don't really play around too much. The niches are pretty important. So we want beauty and fashion for if we have a beauty brand, female, we wanna do this for the audience age. Let's click apply and Typically, you'll find some people where you have to negotiate prices. Some will actually have their own price right here. So yeah, negotiated price, $15. I mean, that's a steal, $100. So a lot of these will post on their actual feed for the 50. And then you also get that ad that you can use for your TikTok marketing campaigns. Now, if you are contacting influencers directly for content and you don't really know how to get them to film exactly what you want, this is an email I typically will send to them with instructions. So as you can see right here, I usually will give them the main points that I want them to cover in their video. So giving them some flexibility, but also letting them know like, like, hey, here's the main things you should be covering. This is what we expect. So one video, uh, again, you can change this based on what you actually want. So maybe you want two videos. Maybe you want a few of them to have photos of your products so that you can post that on your feed as well. Then I usually will give them a Google Drive folder where they can put all the content into and I can approve that before they move on from the deal. And then finally, I usually like to give an ambassador code as well. Now, when I want them to film a specific script, I usually will just provide that exact script to them. So this is actually for my app and I've contacted a few influencers. So I'll say like, hey, say exactly this and they'll film that. So you have a multiple options. You can either just give them some talking points or you can give them an exact script. Now, if you have an e-commerce brand, I would highly recommend following one of these main frameworks with your initial ads. So you can do an unboxing video of your sunglasses. So unboxing the cool shades from blank.com or you could have a demo video so demonstrating how the product is in use or you can have something like a try on haul from this brand whatever your brand name is you can also have a series that's five steps to getting benefits so five steps to feeling more confident today and then you throw in your product as one of the main benefits you can also do something like tiktok made me buy it as your hook that really does get a lot of people's attention and again that can be used for any single product now if you are trying to get on trend and i do recommend using trends in your ads i highly recommend going onto jackson's tips he's on tiktok he has his own three dollar a month subscription that you can get all of the most trending sounds and video ideas so that you can film some great content that is relevant for your brand again you shouldn't be the one doing all this research you should not be on tiktok 24 7 like a japanese schoolgirl laughing all day looking at all the cool dances that you can do later on no have someone else do it for you. As you can see right here, this is a just quick brief snapshot of what the list is. He has hundreds of different ideas. So one of these things is have text on screen. Here's the sound link comedy, and he even gives you tips on how to film the video. So you can try to incorporate that with your product. Now, another way to get ad inspiration is optimizing your TikTok feed. So whenever you see an e-commerce ad, like it, comment, favorite, and click the link. So right here, we got an e-commerce ad on our feed. And oh my God, that, oh, oh, it's disgusting. Blah. I think we're gonna be sick. They have not been watching the TikTok ads course. But again, like it. I wouldn't even recommend really favoriting it. You don't have to do that. But click shop now. And if you do find an ad you actually do like, then you should favorite and save it onto your camera roll for inspiration later on. Oh my God, this website's absolutely horrific. But this is how you get more e-commerce ads shown your way. So if you're looking for inspiration for your TikTok ads, I would highly recommend studying your competitors in the TikTok Creative Center. So I was recently hired by Scent Culture, which makes duplicates of famous designer brands that are really expensive and they make them super cheap. So in order to come up with TikTok ads for them, we went onto the TikTok Ad Center. We went into United States. We looked into fragrances and perfumes, which is, again, you can go through all the different niches so that you pick the one that applies to your brand. And then we went with conversion versions and right here you can take a look at all of the ads from your competitors and see which ones that you want to take some inspiration from or a good hook or a good angle that you feel like you can get some bits and pieces from and after doing that i was able to come up with a whole list of benefits for this brand so we have the same smells as the big brands for a fraction of the cost it's a fragrance 
for the smart, clever consumer. And when I'm creating my TikTok ad scripts, I like to section them with hooks, benefits, social proof, and call to action because that's the main framework that I follow in my ads. So for hooks, I had, do you want to smell like luxury for a fraction of the cost? And then we go to benefits, smell beautiful all day long, eliminate odor for up to 12 hours, seductive scents that last all day. So those are the main benefits that my target customers care about. And also you have to do research and know, hey, based on reviews from similar brands and on Amazon for similar products, what are people saying are the main reasons why they bought the product? And then also look at the one and two star reviews and look at why they don't really like the product that they bought. What were they looking for? What were they expecting? And then say that in your ad, always reverse engineer when it comes to copywriting. That works the best. Now for social proof, I just did love by thousands of young adults because that's our main target market. Then we have some call to actions here. If you want to steal them, sure thing. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and then when it comes to scripts, if I scroll on down here, we have this layout. So why use the same bland deodorant that you've been wearing since middle school? Oof, that's just horrible. And then we got the rest of the script. So if you're wondering what this actually looked like, we did have a really great influencer that we found on Fiverr actually film this exact script. You know who the cute girl at the bar isn't interested in? The guy that smells like her younger brother's ex body spray. Don't panic, bro. I got you. Thanks to the company I found, Sin Culture, you don't have to be that guy anymore. With Sin Culture, you can try out all the luxury designer colognes you've always wanted to get your hands on for as little as five bucks. <laughs> it's a clean and affordable alternative to the designer brands you love. Get yours quick. They're selling out fast. I mean, boom, that guy absolutely crushed it. So we can take a lot of those benefits and talking points, take those clips out, get other clips from other UGC content we're getting, put that together, and we got an ultimate Dragon Ball Z level ad that's going to absolutely dominate. But we could use that ad by itself because it's super fast paced. He has the talking points. And of course, he talks about the call to action at the end that there's a limited sale. It's selling out fast, creating the urgency. And I also had another brand called Tiffany Cat Designs that wanted us to create their ads and website. If you want to watch us create the website, you can click on this video right here. And when we were coming up with the ads, we came up with all these different benefits. So looking for a new backpack, ready to ditch your generic old backpack. So basically those are the main hooks that we're going to do as the opening clip. And then we have all these other benefits. So unleash your inner style. There's nothing worse than a boring backpack add some style to your everyday school wear because these designs are super eye-catching and then we made this ad right here which has just high quality clips showing off the product that's all you can really do when you're selling a non-problem solving product if it's jewelry if it's clothing just have different models different backgrounds of people wearing the product looking good having a good time smiling etc and then you can add the text benefits on screen with the TikTok narrator or having the actual person that is giving you the content reading these exact benefits. So I'm inside TikTok, I've uploaded my ad, and now it's time to add that juicy, beautiful text-to-speech narration. So what you're gonna do, as you can see my ad, I already have text, so keep your favorite drinks fresh for days. So I'm gonna click on the text in the top right corner. And the reason why we're writing this out again is because that's the only way you can really access the text-to-speech. So you click on the little human face right here. Keep your favorite drinks fresh for days. Then move that text under so that it can't be seen. And let's go next, click on back. Keep your favorite drinks fresh for days. Perfect. So you just basically do that for all the different benefits. So the next thing I would do is perfect for parties, tailgates, and kickbacks. And you can set the duration of the text too, so that the text-to-speech narrator actually speaks at the right time. And then we can copy the link of the ad, go into an app called SnapTick, and that way we can download the ad without having the TikTok watermark. But if you want to learn everything about editing TikTok ads, I have a full video on how to do that right here. So you'll thank me later. Now let's talk about the liquid gold of TikTok, the US ad account. And it is, oof, it's like a milkshake. I drink it up. I drink your milkshake. Now, when it comes to setting up a US TikTok account, the reason why you want that is because it allows you to target a lot more countries compared to ones that are native to other countries. So I would recommend if you're international, get a US VPN like NordVPN, get a US virtual address. Again, do your own research on where to buy that. And then also get a US phone number. Those are super easy to rent out. You could look up a random address in the United States on Google Maps. You could also try to guess a random phone number in the US. It really doesn't get too much fact checked like they don't send you any real verifications just make sure you're using the right email though now if you're from the good old red white and blue america all you got to do is put in your phone number put in that business name and you're going to be off to that next step but if you're one of these international amigos make sure to get your virtual phone number right now now after you do that make sure to put in your url and when it comes to billing information obviously you're going to put in your card whatever you want to get billed now 
you do want to do auto pay if possible some accounts let you choose between auto and manual pay auto pay means you automatically get billed and it's just a lot easier compared to having to manually drop in a hundred five hundred dollars and constantly checking to see where your balance is at but once you do that go into shopify go on the app store and look up tiktok and you'll find the app that you need to download and it's basically one of the sales channels you can add on shopify so right here you can see on this account we got the tiktok sales channel when we go on to settings this is where you would log into your business manager basically the account you just created so right here if you go into setup marketing you can log into the account you just created and you can also create your ad account straight from this screen so you can click on create new bada bing bada boom you put in all your details make sure it's right and you'll be good to go and this is a very easy way to create all new ad accounts because you don't want to really get married to an ad account but we'll get into that a little later. But once you select your ad account, go down here to data sharing. I always do maximum and make sure you have your pixel set up. Now, if you don't have one here, you can click create pixel. It takes five seconds to create a new one. It really isn't that hard. Then you're just gonna click confirm. So we click on confirm company info. It's gonna be the final thing. And I, that's usually just your credit card details. And just like that, finish setup and you got everything connected now when it comes to setting up TikTok campaigns there's three specific methods that I like the best now you're probably saying Ethan why would you give us three just give us the best one and we'll just stick with that the thing is when I give out my best method a lot of times it might not work for you and then when I give you the secondary method that might be the actual method that sticks and gets you the best results so the reason why I'm giving you three is so that you can split test and hey if the first option automatically works for you and it's getting your results then you don't have to try the other ones so now the first one I call this it's hip to be square, Huey Lewis. All right, so how this one works, and I've already speaked about this many, many times, it is doing a conversion campaign, having five ad groups, $20 a day, it's all ABO and having two creative. So I'll set that up right now. So for campaign name, I always do the product name and then whatever the break even point is, we're gonna leave CBO turned off. We will do CBO in another testing method, but not this one. So we're scrolling down. Now this part of the ad group, it's gonna be the same. It's uniform for all the testing methods. So we're gonna go down here, click on your pixel and then do complete purchase. Bada bing, bada boom, we're good there. Now for placements, I always will do just TikTok only. We don't want no Pangle. We don't want no newsfeed. What, you this is BuzzFeed. I still wouldn't even advertise on BuzzFeed if they let me do that for free. So when we scroll on down, ACO is going to be turned off for this method. Now, when it comes to locations, I will do United States. I will also do Canada. Now, the thing you're going to notice with this ad account, because it's a personal one, I can't advertise to United Kingdom or Australia. But personally, what we do with our agency clients is we give them an agency account, which allows you to advertise to those countries because they're so untapped and not a lot of people are advertising to them. That way we get a much cheaper CPMs and better ROAS. So right now I'm on an agency account. And as you can see right here, even though it was made in America it's a US account I can advertise to Australia and also the United Kingdom so that's a nice perk of having an agency account agency accounts though typically cost about two to five thousand dollars I know I paid about three thousand dollars for mine but the cool thing is that you rank higher in the auction platform because TikTok is an auction when you're advertising to let's say the fitness audience and you're competing with hundreds of other ad accounts if you're an agency account your ads get seen and they're much cheaper to get in front of people than if you had a normal account plus you also get a TikTok ad rep there's also you typically don't have spending issues and that's a very common problem we'll talk about that later on so if you do want an agency account I do have a resource inside of my paid discord which is a hundred dollars a month you can get your own agency account for a much discounted rate and also get mentored by me we having weekly calls where we review your ad accounts websites products and so much more so if you want to get mentored by me for the cost of testing one product I would join that discord link in description now after you select the location and let's say you're on a personal account which is no biggie when it comes to gender i don't really specify or narrow down unless i know specifically this product is for only one gender so in this case with my slim waist it's a waist trainer it is mainly for females so i would select females now regardless of what you're selling always exclude 13 to 17 because those people don't got no god dang money they're working at walmart they're working at cashiers when at walgreens and they got no money uh, is there any other walgreens whole foods i'm just thinking of businesses that start with w's but after that want to go into interest now for this method i do one campaign five ad groups and in each ad group i am doing a unique interest so i will always do one main interest so for our slim waist we're going to do beauty and personal care because that's the one that makes the most sense. Now, where I do the split testing is one ad group might have a secondary interest, which is clothing. 
another one might have a secondary interest which is wigs another one might be a secondary interest which is style now there's two ways you can select a secondary interest and that's through video interactions and creator interactions and i recommend doing a split test of both so when we do this i do watch till end i do 15 days don't ask me why just do it i don't care stop asking so many questions Jeez louise you're so nosy then we can do something like outfits and then when i'm naming my ad group i'll just name it beauty and personal care slash outfits but when we scroll on down here daily budget is going to be 20 bucks i always run my ads at midnight of the next day i don't like to have them spending on the same day i set them up because that can lead to some spending issues and irregularities so we're going to do midnight just like this super duper simple when it comes to day parting i don't do that initially and then bidding and optimization i don't do value it should be always on conversion and then lowest cost now after this let's get into our ads i usually with this method do two to three ads max so it's up to you again whatever videos you have so when we're setting up our business name as we mentioned earlier you want to make sure it's the same logo same business name as what's presented on your website so you'll select a custom identity you create a new one just by adding the logo here adding your display name and bada bing bada boom you got that set up so when we are uploading our ad super simple you just click the upload section you select whatever file you got but i already have some ads uploaded so i'm just going to do it from the library so let's select one right here we'll go with uh this one now uh, this is very important let's get into ad copies so with ad copies they don't really make much of a difference from what i've seen i think the main way that you should split test is through changing your hooks in your actual video ad so with ad copies here's a few structures you can use so name a product Product, shop now so my slim waist shop now my slim waist 70 percent sale and soon shop now or doing the main benefit so get the waist of your dreams exclamation point it could be as simple as that so if you really want to split test i would say those are what you should use so now that we got that first ad i clicked on the duplicate button and that way you can get your second or third ad whatever it is so let's click on the second ad and let's change up the video so i'm going to update this so we'll do this ad right here click on confirm and bada bing bada boom we're going to scroll on down to website now for call to action i always do the shop now button keep it simple and then for url i'm always doing my product page never the home page never collection page unless i am promoting a specific collection so with our e-commerce brand clients in some cases we do do that so you need to know obviously what you're promoting and then finally, after you do that, click on submit. And now we have to duplicate this ad group four times so that we have five copies and then we can edit the secondary interest. So as you can see right here, that's exactly what I did. So I got five of these. One has beauty as the secondary interest. One has culture, the other one daily life, fashion and beauty and beauty and style. But they all had the same two ads inside of them. So as you can see right here, video revision two and then TikTok slim waist ad. Now our secondary testing method is actually what we're doing right now. And this is called the Chad method, the giga Chad. So what you're gonna do right here is do CBO from the the gecko now it's up to you what you want to do if you're on a budget fifty dollars definitely works i recommend a hundred if you got a little bit of money a little bit of shmoney to spend and if you're really a big baller like a legit e-commerce brand that's got some funding 200 to 300 dollars is going to be a great way to start so after this again it's the exact same settings it's going to be the website all this stuff now if you're wondering about audience size in the top right I try to have audiences that are at least 20 million in size, but this is going to be very similar in the way that we set up the first one. However, we're going to have only four ad groups in this campaign. So hundred dollars CBO, four ad groups, two of them will have interest and the other two will have no interest. So what I mean by no interest is literally when you go to the interest section, you put in all your location, you put in your age, you don't select any of these you just keep it broad so i have this campaign set up right here and as you can see we have two of these with interest two of them with no interest now where it gets really interesting is that we usually will do two creatives with this campaign and we're really trying to find out if we can find a best ad from those two while also testing should we go broad or should we go with interest so there's so many split tests going on even though it's very very simple so with this first no interest audience we have our first ad creative so it's the TikTok slim waist ad. Now, when we go back into our other broad one, we have our second ad. So the way you can think about this is we have two of them with no interest. One is seeing ad one, the other one is seeing ad two. So as you can see right here, we got ad two with the no interest audience. That's number two. Now, when it comes to our interest audiences, we actually have both of the ad creatives showing, but the only thing we're split testing there is the interest themselves. So they're both seeing, again, both of the creatives, only split test there's the interest 
then when it comes to the ones that are both the exact same they're just both broad they get one ad each and then the final setup is if you already have at least four to five creatives made for your product so this is the deadly duo so for the deadly duo how you want to set this up cbo again you're gonna do a hundred dollars two hundred dollars three hundred again the bigger the budget, the faster you get the data. So let's get into the ad group part of this. Now, I would recommend if you're doing a $100 CBO, have five audiences. But if you're doing a $300 CBO, have 10 audiences and 200 around seven to eight. So it depends on whatever your budget is when you're doing the deadly duo. It's very similar. Again, placements, we already know what to do there. Now, I think this is something that I did not actually talk about. And this is advanced settings. You want to turn off user comment and also turn off video download. We never do that it doesn't really tend to ever increase your ROAS having those two things on. So just leave them off. Now, the main thing you're doing with this one is turning on ACO. That's where the duo comes in with the CBO ACO combinations. Now, when it comes to the actual ad groups themselves, if you're doing five audiences, I would recommend having three of them having an interest, two of them being broad. If you're doing 10 audiences, I would have eight of them having an interest, two of them being broad. I would always have two being broad, the rest being interest, no matter how much ad groups you have. So we're scrolling on down again you can select your interests but really where the action happens and where this is going to be different than everything else is when we're setting up the ad part of it so let's just select our pixel again you already know what to do i'm just going to bash this into your brain exactly what you need to do this is where we can do some fun stuff and i would say aco is right now the most profitable thing on TikTok. it's sort of what's trendy it's what's getting the best results and the meta might change a little later i would recommend selecting about four to five videos it really depends how many videos you have then we click on confirm like this and then you can split test some different ad copies so let's go down here for ad copies again we can do the main benefit so get the waste of your dreams so we got our three ad techs and this is going to make a total of 15 ads because we got five videos times that by three ad captions so 15 there now for the website link again you're just going to do your product page collection page whatever you're mainly advertising now for call to action text you do want to customize this so that you can can do the standard and then obviously shop now and then once you're done with that again the ad groups it depends on your budget so we did a 100 cbo so we have five different ad groups two of these are broad and then when you click on one of these ad groups as you can see right here we got a ton of different ads it's not two we got 10 i decided to get rid of one of the ad captions but as you can see right here all of these are ready to go all right bear with me people it's currently five in the morning and i'm pulling an all-nighter getting this video done so the next thing we want to talk about is kpis and numbers so when you're setting up your columns this is exactly how i like to do it i like to have my total cost budget impression cpm so this is all funnel so basically what happens with your ads people will see them impression then they'll click on your ad click next thing they'll do is add to cart if they're interested in your product then they'll complete payment the reason why i don't have checkout initiated is because tiktok doesn't really track that at all then we have our payment row as and then boom you can save this as a preset column so that's personally how i like to track everything it's up to you how you want to do your kpis and columns but that's mine now when you are tracking your analytics you need to know what your kpis are now for your ad the way to really track the performance and success of it is your cost per click and your ctr so as you can see right here a good cost per click in my eyes is 50 cents or less and a good ctr is typically 1.5 percent or more now this will depend on your cpm meaning if you have a low cpm it's usually harder to get a higher ctr so right here as we can see my cost per click 55 cents 1.35 so this is telling me that i can definitely make a few tweaks to my ad to make it slightly better there is room for improvement but if you're noticing with your cost per click it's at 20 cents 10 cents your ctr is four percent five percent the ad isn't really the issue if you're not profitable yet it's going to be your website and your actual offer now for cpm i typically aim for under ten dollars and really the dream goal is under five dollars and you can do that by broadening your audiences when you open it up don't do the interest targeting, have the locations, have the age broad, have the gender broad. That is going to get you the lowest CPMs because you're opening it up for TikTok to literally show your ad in front of almost anyone. Now, when we look at KPIs for your website, I recommend having an ad to cart ratio of 5% or more. That's usually a sign of a winning product. If you're getting less than that and you're dropshipping, probably want to move on. If you have an e-commerce brand, probably need to change your offer, whether that's split testing your price. And I use an app called Neat AB Testing to do split tests. So Right when I set up a testing campaign, I'm split testing my price by lowering it by $5 or raising it by $5 for 24 hours to see what converts the best. And then for conversion rate, I usually aim for at least 2% and I want half of my checkouts to convert into purchases. So right here, 7.4 into 4%. That's really solid. That's exactly what I want. And usually you want a third of your add to carts to convert into a purchase. So one 
in every three. And if you're not hitting those numbers, I have a full video on what to do if you're getting a lot of ads to carts, but not a lot of purchases, which again is a very common issue. But once you get some data back and you're looking into scaling, you should be narrowing your audiences. Now, a good way to look at what is the most profitable segments for you to narrow down into is by going into your ad group, click on view data, and you wanna be seeing where the purchase data is coming from. So we can go to audience just like this, and you'll see some breakdowns. Now for metrics, we wanna do conversions. That's the really the only thing that matters. And let's just scroll on down here and see what the breakdown is like. So right here, I see 35 through 44, I'm getting a $25 cost per result. I should probably be narrowing down just into that age group because it's the most profitable and definitely excluding 25 to 34 because yeah, that cost per purchase is pretty bad. But obviously I want to look at the numbers through every single ad group that has a purchase because maybe this is just this one ad group and it's an outlier. You really never know. Uh, so we can break it down by age. Now let's see gender. So $46. I only advertise to female. That's why it's going to be like that. We can see country region. I believe I did United States and Canada. So right here, Canada is the one getting all the purchases. So we'll just stick with Canada. And then the really cool thing is that we can also break it down by interest, which is super duper cool. So beauty and personal care, look at all of these right here. They're pretty uniform. I'm not seeing anything that's insanely cheap. I mean, some of them are at 43, some are at 50. So it's hard to really make any exact action based off that data. So you really want to only scale down once you know for a fact, all right, this is the specific age group. This is specific gender. This is the interest that's working the best. So again, we can look at all the data. So let's go into just one more so you can see how we do. And then we go into audience and let's see if we can notice anything different over here. So let's go to conversions, scroll on down and we can see, okay, 35 through 44. Again, that seems to be our winning age graphic and United States is doing a lot better. So this is why we would want to split test. And again, read all the data before making a conclusion on where we should scale down into. Now, when you're media buying, your whole job is to scale the winning audiences and to obviously kill what's not working. But I do see a lot of beginners make the mistake of, okay, my audience has been profitable five days in a row, but today I don't know what's going on. I have no sales. Nothing's happening. I need to shut down everything, kill the business, move on. That's not how you approach media buying. When you're media buying, you should make decisions based on large sample sizes. And if you only have, let's say seven days worth of sample size, then analyze your ads through that seven days. I would say seven day window is typically the best to understand where you should be scaling and where you should be killing your audiences. So if I notice over seven days that I have an audience that's been profitable, then I'm going to scale it by upping the budget. So what I can do is edit the budget. And I usually like to make very small incremental changes with the actual ones that are on. So I'll schedule a budget change like this, do $30 and then confirm. So usually 20 to 30% increases are the way to go. Now with TikTok, you have to increase the budget by at least $10 for it to actually confirm. So right here, as you can see, this is a scaling method. And we'll talk about scaling methods a little bit later on, but yes, when you are scaling or killing audiences, look at it through a three to seven day lens. Do not just make all your decisions based on one bad day because you're gonna make a lot of wrong ones. Now, another way to solve TikTok inconsistencies is trying new creatives. Now, you obviously need to know your numbers first. If the ads are reaching their KPIs, so they're under 50 cents, CTR is looking good, then maybe you shouldn't be trying new creatives and you should be split testing your offer and your website. So it's not really TikTok's fault, it's again, the website. And that's why you should know your KPIs and have some goals established so that you know if you're meeting your numbers or not. However, if you are seeing some inconsistencies like, hey, three days have been profitable, but the last two days, nothing's worked. Yes, it is good to refresh the ads sometimes. It's also good to be testing new audiences. And even sometimes we will run the exact same ads on a new ad account because sometimes ad accounts just after a certain amount of time the cpm just raises dramatically or when i test a product on a new ad account the cpm could be 20 dollars, and then i'm like all right let me try this product one more time on another ad account that's new and the cpm is five dollars and it's super profitable over here so i would say do not be married to an ad account this isn't facebook where okay we have one ad account this is the only thing we're ever going to use no you can easily create new tiktok accounts and we showed you earlier on that video you just click create new ad account and then okay we can run some ads on a new one because sometimes the ad accounts just optimize wrong and just some of them are just doomed to fail and they give you horrible CPMs. So you might have to have four, five, six different ad accounts for the product that you're testing to find the right one that will 
be profitable. Now, if you are seeing inconsistencies with your TikTok ads, you can also try ACO if you're not already. So if you have two to three ad creatives already prepared, set up that CBO ACO combination we already talked about, see how that performs. That's also a great way of scaling. Now, before we get into scaling ad accounts, the main problem you're most likely gonna face when setting up your first campaigns is the ads aren't spending whatsoever. They might spend 10 bucks, 12 bucks, but your daily budget is 100. Now, things that you can do to improve that, all my solutions are in this video right here. But the main thing that I recommend doing is recreating the campaign that you already made. So if you tried the Chad method of doing a CBO for ad groups, having all those different creatives sort of split apart, recreate it and literally just create the exact same campaign you already did and turn off the original one. Now, another thing you can do after setting up one campaign using one of the three methods we already talked about is running a sidekick view content campaign. For some ungodly reason, when you have this view content campaign also spending money, TikTok will spend money fully on that campaign and that will enable it to spend the full $100, $200 budget on your purchase big hitter campaign. So if you're wondering how to set that up, this is a very common way to solve the issue. So go to conversions like this, CBO turned off. You're only gonna do one ad group in this campaign, $20 a day. And if you notice your conversion event is gonna be view content. And the reason why is because view content is the easiest one to optimize for because it's a higher funnel event. You can get 50 view contents a lot easier than getting 50 purchases because view content is just a link click. So you can just set this up, have one interest. It can be broad. It really doesn't matter. The settings, just try to make them the same or similar as to the audiences you have set up in the big hitter campaign that you already have. So you'll just set it up. $20 a day. And then when it comes to creatives, I just throw in one in here and let that spend alongside your purchase campaign. So now let's talk about scaling. And we already talked about doing daily budget increases of 20 to 30% on your winning audiences that are already active. Now, another thing that you can do is duplicating your winning audiences. So let's say this one's really profitable for me. And what I can do is double the budget to $40 a day. I could also try 60, 80, 100, whatever you're comfortable with. I recommend scaling very aggressively with TikTok. So you go from zero to 7,000 real quick a day. So right here, we can edit the budget. We can do, let's say 60. Personally, I usually do 60. And then if it works at $60 a day, I'll duplicate the $60 one into a new campaign at 100. Then from 100, I do 200. Then 200, I do 400. But again, it's ABO. It's literally just increasing the budget and vertically scaling. Now I'd say the main way we're scaling ad accounts is definitely the Chad method. And this is where you'll spend a bit of money. So it's the same thing with placements, same thing with the interest, the targeting, all that stuff. The only thing you're doing once you've identified some winning interest already is you're gonna up the budget so let's say a hundred dollars a day. So you have 10 audiences all doing a hundred dollars a day and you're going to only have your best creative inside. This is really the best way I feel like of scaling. And if that works, you can try another campaign, 10 audiences, trying some new interests inside of them, but showing them only your best creative. So again, this is by far the best way of scaling in my opinion, doing the ABOs a hundred dollars a day, having 10 of these ad groups. It is a super Chad thing to do. But yeah, once you have some winners, you just turn off obviously the ones that aren't working, keep on the ones that are, and you've got some killer audiences that are spending a good amount of money. Now, when you're scaling and you're only showing your best creative, obviously ad fatigue is gonna happen and you're gonna have to make new ads. So let's say in this instance, you've made five new ads that you wanna test and see which one performs the best. What I would recommend doing is having one campaign, five ad groups, and all of them are the exact same ad groups. So if you want to do interest, have them all have the same interest. If you want to do broad, have them all just be broad, no interest inside of them. And then each ad group. So let's say ad group one, we'll see ad one. Ad group two sees ad two. Ad group three sees ad three. So that way each audience only sees one ad. And because all the audiences are the same, the only thing that's being split test is the ad itself. So you'll know, okay, if audience one is doing super well, it's because the ad is really well. And then once you identify the ad that's working, you can go into your current audiences that are active. And I always get this question, like how do I refresh my creatives if my audience is already turned on? What you'll do is let's say this creative right here, this top one is fatiguing. We turn it off, but just like this, we click on copy. So existing campaign, existing ad group, confirm, 
then it's going to give you the ad screen like this and this is where you would add in that new creative that you've identified is a winner so this is how you refresh stuff that's already active now i know this is a lot of information so if you are interested in having the experts do everything that i just explained in this video for your e-commerce brand or if you have a drop shipping brand and you want a team of experts to be testing products for you with an advanced scaling strategies for tiktok then i'd highly recommend booking a call down below bodmiami.com and we would love to help you scale to one grand a day or more